Welcome to this lecture. Here we are going to discuss more about dynamic URLs in Django. In the previous lecture, we implemented dynamic URLs using the concept of route parameters. There is another way to work with the dynamic URLs and that is using the concept of query parameters or query string. So what we do is that after the prefix, we put a question mark and then we specify the query parameter and we assign some value to it. Let's implement this now. Let's consider a food recipe example. For this, we need to define a function. Let's say I'm using a function named as recipe, passing the request parameter, a mandatory parameter. We will be defining a variable. And now this time we are going to get that request from the user. For this, we need to use the, this request parameter, request dot. We have to use the get property and then attach a get method with it. So let's say the name of that parameter I want to pass is, let it be food. You must take care that this variable and the name of the parameter can be different. They need not to be same. So for simplicity, we are considering them same. Now we need to return an HTTP response and we can print a message. Let's say recipe is available for food and the name of the variable is food. Right. For this, now we can define a URL. Let's come to the URLs part and write path and specify whatever the URL you want and mention the name of the function. So the name of our function is also recipe. Let's check the output now. Our server is already working, so let's check out. So we have an invalid syntax, perhaps you forgot a comma. Okay, so let's put a comma. After this path, we need to put the comma and then we need to check the result. This time there will be no error. And now let's check by following this link. After following the link, we need to put the prefix. The prefix is recipe. We need to write recipe. And now this time, because it's a query string, and for query string, we need a question mark symbol. Put the question mark and then write down the name of that recipe. Uh, first of all, we have to put that specific parameter name. The name of the parameter is food and its value to be assigned. Let's say I'm using the value as chicken. So you can see, let me zoom in. You will be able to see that recipe is available for chicken. This line is now printed. But this example is going to work only if you have just one parameter. Now we can consider one example where we have more than one parameter. Then let's say two parameters or three parameters. For now, let's work with two parameters. Let's consider a question that you have been asked to add two numbers. So you will be required to put uh, two parameters inside the query string as two numbers and uh, your function is going to calculate the addition of those two numbers. So let's define addition as the name of the function, pass the request parameter. We will be defining those two numbers, value one equals two. We need to use request dot get property, use the get method. And inside this, we will be specifying the name of that query parameter. This is our first number. Now we have our second number that is value two. Again, use request and get property, use the get method and the name of your parameter, query parameter will be value two. All right. Now after this, we need to perform the calculation and we will be storing the calculation inside a variable called result. Let's say if I write value one plus value two. We are specifying value one plus value two. And then after this, we'll be returning, return HTTP response. Use the F string and uh, we will be using result of addition is result. So after this, let's specify the URLs inside the URL. 
we require path let's put the comma and we require the path let's say the name of the url we want is addition and let's specify the name of the function views dot the name of the function is also addition let's check for any errors so there are no errors let's check out its result now let's go to this url now here we are going to write addition and after the question mark we have to specify the first value first value is value 1 equals to let's say i am writing 6 now when you have another parameter that is separated with the help of ampersand sign whenever you have more than one parameter for separation we use ampersand or the and symbol so you put the and symbol and then write value 2 equals to then you can specify your another number so the result of addition it says 64 it means that instead of adding the numbers it's actually concatenating it so let's try to make some changes inside our code we need to specify these values as integer only so we need to put we need to convert them into integers write int by using the parenthesis outside these values let's check for the errors right so there is no more error and now we can get back to the result reload the page and now you see that the result of addition is now 10 so now we will be implementing an example where we are given three parameters i'll be now showing you a practice question you can pause the video for some time and try the question yourself first. Later on, you can come back to this video in order to find out the solution. Solution. So this is the question. You are developing a Django application and you need to create a view named calculate that performs various mathematical operations based on URL parameters. The view should accept three parameters. So this time you have the three parameters whose names are operation, value one and value two, and perform the specified operation on these two values. The user input values for value one and value two should be obtained from the URL parameters. The valid operations are add, subtract, multiply, and divide. If the user provides non-numeric values for value 1 or value 2, the view should respond with an error message. So you have to implement the necessary code in views.py and urls.py files to achieve this functionality. And you must do this with the help of query parameters. Alright, so let's get back to the solution. We need to define a function with the name calculate and pass request parameter. Inside the function, we are having three variables, operation, value 1 and value 2, which are holding the parameters operation, value 1 and value 2 respectively. Operations are such as add, subtract, multiply and divide, while value 1 and value 2 are the values upon which these operations will be performed. Now, according to the question, it's also said that if the user is providing any non-numeric value, then there should be an error message. For this, we need to perform some exception handling. So, first of all, we need to use the try block, where we have to convert the values into float. So, the try block will try to convert those non-numeric values provided by the user into numeric values using float. But if this block fails, then an exception will be raised and the name of that exception is value error. Value error is used as an exception in Python when the user provides any invalid input. For exception, we use the keyword accept. So this uh, HTTP response will be returned that is an invalid value. Now, after the user has provided a valid value, then 
it starts to execute these if else statements. So here we need to check that if the operation is add, then add the two numbers. And instead of else, if we have elif in Python. So we need to use the elif keyword and we need to check if it is subtract, then it will subtract the numbers and will assign it to the result. Same way we will be using all these statements. And in the end, in case if the user is giving any invalid operation, apart from all these mentioned operations, then it will print invalid operation. But if the operation is valid and the values are also valid, everything is correct, then this statement will be executed. It will print result of operation as the result. All right. So let's check this for any errors. There are no errors. Let's check the result on the browser. Before that, let's have a look at the URL. This is the URL. We need to use calculate as the prefix and then we will specify the query string. We need to provide calculate. Calculate and we have to put operation. So already I have specified operation equals to add and value 1 equals to 2 and value 2 equals to 9. So let's check the result for this. The result of add operation is 11 which is correct. Now let's say if I am giving any invalid operation. For example, I write here product. It will say invalid operation. And on the other side, let's say let's get back to add once again. Now let's provide any invalid input. For example, write down any string ABC. Now it will say invalid value. Means whenever you are providing invalid value, then in that case it will run the exception handling. And in case if you are providing the invalid operation, then the last else part is going to work. This is all for this lecture. In the next lecture, we will discuss about regular expression in Django URLs.